Good morning from Thorpe Park. You're watching Adventure Planet, where today it is Saturday, the 23rd of March, and Thorpe Park's day one opening here in Surrey. It's absolutely fantastic to get back. It always feels like such a long time since we were last here at Thorpe Park, because of course they don't have a Christmas event here. So essentially it's shut towards the end of October all the way through until the end of March, which is a little bit of a shame. However, like I say, it does make coming back all the more special. We're going to head on in today, check out all those 2024 updates and refurbishments, all as, as part of their project Sparkle updates. Lots to see in here today, obviously as well as the new merch and checking out all the latest on Hyperia. And of course, we're going to get back on some of the very best coasters in the UK today. Now, the weather's looking a little bit iffy today. Could be expecting some rain later, but what's worse is it is expecting to be quite windy. So hopefully that's not going to affect the coasters too much. We'll have the best day that we can, obviously. If you want to come down to Thorpe Park and check it all out for yourself, prices start online in advance from £29 and like Alton Towers, it's £10 to park your car here. Park hours today, 10 a.m. through until 6. Let's go and check out these changes. And starting off at the entrance of the park then, and as we saw a couple of weeks ago when I was down here for Thorpe Park, this was obviously all getting done. We had all the scaffold around here. That's all now complete, all nicely repainted and replaced with Thorpe Park's new logo, all as part of their rebranding, which took place over the closed season. Yeah, we've got all the flags out here as well blowing in that uh, pretty strong wind yeah like i say a little bit worried about the coasters today but uh, yeah we'll make the most of it let's head on in and see if they fix up that screen in the main entrance plaza well i'll tell you what when the wind dies down that sun is actually really quite nice at the moment we'll make the most of that yeah here in the main entrance plaza of the park now and yeah like i said a couple of minutes ago we did kind of get a little bit of a sneak preview of this area back when we were here for the hyperia construction as you can see all the kind of painting that's gone on here freshening things up which looks really really good but most importantly is the screen back in fully functioning order not a dead pixel in sight there is still a couple of stuck ones here and there but otherwise it looks a lot better than it did at the end of last season which is great to see let's head on over to the island like no other and check out some further updates in base camp and it's great to see that the paper park maps are back for this season but yes look at the skyline of Thorpe Park and how much has this changed since this time last season look at the absolute dominance of Hyperia it looks absolutely incredible the layout fully in place now we'll be taking a closer look at that as we get further into the park a little bit later on yeah on the bridge now over to the dome and yeah this looks really nice as well all nice and freshly painted up in that kind of aqua blue color all the new branding on the bridge going forward here. Scream louder, soar higher as we head on over to the dome. Oh, it really is great to be back. Audio blaring out on the bridge here as well. And yeah, if the weather stays like this, as long as the wind calms down a little bit, it really is a pleasant day today. Oh, it's gonna be great. Can't wait to get back on some of my favorite rides here. The swarm is calling my name. <laughs> as we enter into the dome and here we are inside the dome then yeah a couple of changes that happen over the closed season in the dome here still got vibes bar and kitchen off to the left there the biggest change actually was the coffee shack this was all completely gutted and built pretty much from the ground up so that's all looking nice and fresh now I'll be grabbing myself a coffee from there a little bit later on and you've got this nice photo opportunity just off to the right here as well with the new Thought Park logo and branding which is nice Got the island shop in here as well. We'll be checking out the new merch a little bit later on. Probably in the island mega store. Actually in the park itself. See what we've got. See if we've got any kind of, you know, shirts with the new logo on. <laughs> we'll check that out a little bit later on. Let's head on outside and take a look at that awesome skyline. Oh, and here we are once again looking over the absolutely awesome skyline of Thorpe Park for the first time in several months. And it's great to be back, it really is. Look at that. Depth charge is looking good. Looks like a bit of a different shade of blue. Definitely had a repaint of some kind that ride. Looking nice and fresh. Swarm over the background there. Stealth, tidal wave. Tidal wave is actually closed by the look of it. No water running there. And stealth is just rolling back. Hey! 
That's how windy it is. Just caught a stealth roll back there. Oh, I wish I was on it. <laughs> that was good timing. Nemesis Inferno, detonator in the back there as well. And uh, apparently Colossus is also closed for today. A little bit of a delay on the maintenance of that. And for the same reason, Samurai is also closed. Delay on the maintenance and the repaint on that ride. But hopefully in terms of closures, that's the only three that we're going to get today. Uh, yeah, apart from obviously, like I say, the downtime with the wind, which uh, we'll see as the day goes on. But yeah, absolutely fantastic to be back here and seeing all this. Ah, oh, depth charge. Might make that my first ride of the day. And just had my first ride of the day on depth charge then. And as you saw at the end of that clip, Swarm was testing. So uh, looking positive for today. I thought I'd start my day in the Lost City area over here at Vortex. And unfortunately, yeah. This ride is closed as well. Another ride that wasn't actually mentioned on the app for its closure, so this is disappointing to see as well. Vortex, one of my favorite flat rides here in the park, the KMG Afterburner, that is closed for today. Yeah, that's not good in terms of ride availability so far today. That's a little bit of a shame to see. Zodiac in action though, along with Rush Quantum also working as well, which is good to see. Always do like a ride on Zodiac. Used to be at Drayton Manor, this one, as Cyclone. It does say closed, but it is in operation, so we'll jump on that and get my second ride of the day. And yeah, we've definitely had some teething issues here in the Lost City area of the park today. Just had a QEVAC on the uh, Huss Enterprise here, Zodiac. Just managed to get my ride on it, however, the ride after, it kind of started spinning up and then very quickly stopped again, and the ride was evac. This is uh, just testing now, so hopefully that'll be open again very, very soon. And Rush has spent the best part of the last 20 minutes down as well. But it uh, looks like that has just reopened. However, in much better news, I have just seen Colossus testing. So hopefully that will be opening up today at some point. It's not open currently. However, hopefully a little bit later on it will. The good old reliable ride in Lost City appears to be the Fabry Magic Carpet Quantum. Yeah, 21 years old now, that ride. Yeah, Rush is looking good though, isn't it, with this repaint? Got those gold supports now, the restraints all looking fresh. Yeah, looking really good. Current queue time of just 10 minutes. Let's hop on the SNS Screaming Swing. And unfortunately, Rush is still not open. The entrance is still chained off. They haven't actually evac the queue yet, though, so hopefully it will be opening soon. But I thought I'd just come and take a closer look at the new paint job. And yeah, it actually looks really nice. Of course, this was all part of Thought Park's Sparkle project, which essentially um, was a budget that's been given to all the Merlin parks. But Thought Park really has spent it on a lot of refurbishments, a lot of repairs, and a lot of repaints uh, around the park, including an entirely new area, Big Easy Boulevard, which we'll take a look at later, and obviously the huge Hyperia project. But yeah, Rush is looking really good with its repaint. I like the gray and gold. And uh, yeah, the seating looks good as well with that fresh blue and the restraints all nicely redone. Let's just hope it comes up, uh, back up into operation soon. Because yeah, not looking good for the Lost City area currently. But it's good to see one of the four rides here in the Lost City area of the park. Good old reliable Quantum, the 2003 Fabry Magic Carpet. <laughs> What a classic ride, 21 years old now. Great family ride, this one. And as Rush continues to test, I thought I'd come out of the Lost City area and head on over to Amity. Yeah, worth noting that uh, the majority of the Coke Freestyle machines have also been upgraded throughout the park over the closed season. We've also got this water refill station here as well. Bit of a throwback to the old swarm toilets here where you press with your foot to fill up your water bottle. So yeah, that's good to see if you want some free water. And yeah, like I say, heading on over to the Amity section of the park now then. High striker off to the left. And of course, the Amity Beach is also closed today. Probably a little bit too cold for it. Let's head on over and take a look at Tidal Wave. And over here on Amity now then, at Storm Surge, the 2011 Whitewater West water ride. Oh, that's a bit of a tongue twister, that one. And uh, yes, yeah, good to see all this looking fresh. And the good thing is, is the water effects are back. 
Yeah, down here we got the water that comes down off of this pipe here and also throughout the ride getting people really wet and I think a lot of people aren't really expecting it because it's currently off, doesn't actually come on until a boat gets to around this point. So, uh, well, there you go, they've just come on now and uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, people are really expecting it. Hey, you've also got the water cannons in effect as well, catching people out and here we go. Oh, for them it turned off, they got lucky. <laughs> it's not turning off for everybody. Yeah, interesting fact about this one, this actually came from Legoland Florida back in the day. Been here since 2011 and it's a good little ride this. Don't really fancy getting wet on it in today's weather though, not quite warm enough. <laughs> And from Storm Surge then, right opposite to Tidal Wave. And yeah, here we are, Marlin Press, Amity Bugle. You've got your Amity Kebabs off there to the right, if you fancy a kebab. And yeah, it's great to be back to the Pier 13 branding again for Tidal Wave. This all looks really good. This uh, whole ride really underwent an extensive refurb over the closed season. This entire walkway, this bridge, has all been completely rebuilt and actually looks really, really good. And then you've got all the pool area. This was all repainted a nice light blue, so that looks really fresh. And the station itself, the actual roof of that, was entirely replaced. Obviously, with water rides, they're a lot more susceptible to kind of wear and tear and general rot, really. Um, so, yeah, they do need a, a good replacement every, several, every kind of couple of years, if you like. And so uh, Tidal Wave was long overdue, so it's good to see that that work has been done. Dockside Snacks, just to the left here closed currently and we got the Ben and Jerry's wagon here as well peace love and ice cream <laughs> but yeah I do love the Amity area of Thought Park it's one of my favorite themed areas so it's great to see that getting a little bit of love and care over the closed season you got the Island Megastore off to the left we'll be checking out the new merch in there shortly let's see if we can get up this walkway here and take a little bit of a closer look Oh, and I do love this area of the park. It does look great. And from up here, you can really appreciate those uh, refurbishments. All the pool area looking really, really nice. And of course, that station as well. Absolutely amazing theming for this area. And they've got a new sound effect as well uh, coming from this kind of church tower here of the church bells, which sounded really, really good. Just missed that swarm in the background there, which is good to see that's still going because the wind is still quite strong at the moment. So uh, that's really good to see. But yeah, look at this walkway. All this fresh wood here, all the new roofing. It looks really, really great, I have to say. They've done a great job in this area of the park over the closed season. It looks fantastic. Shame it's not in operation. I would have liked to have got some off-ride shots. But like I say, certainly not a ride that I would have been getting on today. Anyway, I think it's time to head on over to the Island Megasaur just over the back here. Let's take a look at all the new merch for 2024. And what is interesting to see here in the store is that they are still stocking all of the uh, older wearables with the old branding on it. Yeah, a lot of stuff still with the old Infinity logo on here. Like the mugs, the bags, the lanyards, water bottles, various t-shirts and hoodies here, all with the old logo on. There's actually nothing with the new branding on in terms of wearables. The only thing that I've actually found is this hat here. That's got the new logo on. But uh, yeah, nothing else here in the shop featuring the new logo, which is uh, yeah interesting actually. I was expecting a lot more. They do seem to be set up for Mardi Gras already in here though, with all the Mardi Gras colors and a little bit of the Mardi Gras merch. Of course, Mardi Gras as an event is actually starting a lot earlier this year and it doesn't run for quite so long. It actually starts in just a couple of days on the 29th of March through until the 14th of April. And that actually leads me to believe that they are gonna throw some kind of an event for a Hyperia's opening and I imagine that that's going to be announced fairly soon. Obviously we know Carnival is no longer a thing this year either so uh, yeah there is quite a big gap for something and I suspect they're leaving that for Hyperia's opening but yeah just a little bit shocked really that there's nothing with the new branding on in here. And they've got some nice new bits of Colossus merch in here as well look at this <laughs> that's pretty loud isn't it? Yeah quite like that 25 pounds. Yeah this is really nice down here as well. Yeah, really like that. Nice and embroidered as well. That's good to see. That's a nice hoodie. It would have been better if it had zip pockets, but yeah, that's really nice. Like the colouring again, nice and embroidered on there. Uh, no price on that one, not that I can see. That's really nice. Got the Colossus branding on the shoulders there as well. And the Times 10 on the back. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. 
That, uh, that could be a purchase a little bit later on. I do like that. Some stealth merch here as well. Got the stealth hoodie. Some swarm merch here. By the gelée, that's nice. Again, nice and embroidered on there as well. <laughs> I do like these. That's great. Use that as a... Uh, well, who knows what would go in there. Definitely a shot glass of some kind. Little grenade. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you got the older merchant here as well, like these Nemesis Inferno mugs. Still an absolute lover of that. It's one of my favorite mugs that I own. Really, really nice. Nice and embossed. Nemesis Inferno shirt there. Again, nice and embroidered. I like the Nemesis Inferno hoodie. That's pretty nice as well. Is that a price on that one? 60 pounds for that one. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. We got a couple of new saw bits as well. Yeah, this is nice. I like the white. Again, nice and embroidered. They're a little bit more expensive, 30 pounds, but the fact that they're embroidered is definitely worth the extra. You've got the jigsaw pieces on the back. I would gladly pay an extra five or 10 pounds more for an embroidered logo. That's, uh, that's really good to see. And it's on a lot of it in here as well. Yeah, that's great. That's really, really nice. Even some Ghost Train merch here. Again, with the embroidered logo. Yeah, really, really good to see. 50 pounds for that one. I do really like all these new mugs as well. 12 pounds for one, three for 30 or five for 50. Yeah, they're all really nice. Love this Amity one here. That's really cool. All the different Amity logos on there. You've got Nemesis Inferno, Colossus. Yeah, these are all really nice. Love the Swarm one, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I really do like these. Legalize aliens. <laughs> you got Stealth there as well. Yeah, really nice mugs, these. Not bad at all. And this is quite a nice new Saw mug as well. That is huge. Nice big logo on there. The Play Me cassette tape. Yeah, that's really nice, that one. Yeah, I like that. Get a big old cup of coffee out of that one. <laughs> and while I'm here in Amity then, I thought I would come into the KFC here because the theming in here is absolutely fantastic. All the boat and all the destroyed ceiling. It looks really, really good. And there's been some refurbs here as well. Just behind the counter there, they've got more monitors, which hopefully should provide a more kind of uh, speedy and efficient service, if you like. And also all the furniture's been replaced as well. All the tables and chairs are all brand new in here, and it all really does look fantastic. If you don't usually come in here for your food, it's definitely worth visiting it just the once, just to take a look at all this theming. It really is great. And there's my friend, the shark, just up there. <laughs> And from Amity Cove to New Orleans, Big Easy Boulevard. Now this is where the majority of that Sparkle Project funding was spent. And here we are, yes, yeah, straight away you can see that the big portal that used to be here for Angry Birds Land, you can kind of still see where it was on the ground here, has been removed, allowing for a much better view of stealth, which is really great to see. Got the stall off to the right here as well as churros, waffles and shakes. And yeah, I gotta say, look at these. They look absolutely fantastic. It looks really, really nice. Got the Oreo shake here. Yeah, look at that. Biscoff, strawberry. Looks absolutely delicious. Yeah, really, really nice. But here we are, Big Easy Boulevard. And I'll tell you what, it's actually been a relatively quiet day at the park today. I suspect that a lot of people are kind of waiting for Mardi Gras to start in a few days, or more likely waiting for the release date of Hyperia. Because, uh, yeah, for opening day, this is probably one of the quieter, op quietest opening days I've seen for Thorpe Park. As you can see, Big Easy Boulevard, pretty empty here. But, uh, yeah, I really do like what they've done with this area. You've got Big Easy bumpers just off to the right here. You've got the Mardi Gras stage set up and ready to go for in a couple of days' time. Big Easy bumpers replacing King Pig's Wild Hogs. Hey, <laughs> Saxon the City Music Store there. And we got Sweet Easy on the left now instead of Flock and Shop. Detonator's still here, rethemed as part of the Firework Factory. Yeah, the 115 foot Fabry drop tower. Really, really good ride that. One of the most kind of intense drop towers in the country, really. Like I say, only 115 feet, but drops you at speeds of 50 miles an hour. And it is pretty intense as well. But yeah, it's great to see. This looks a lot fresher. Nice to see all the canopies that used to be here for the 4D cinema removed. Really kind of opens the area up quite a lot. Sunset cinema now. 
showing Ready Player One, about a 15 minute show. And yeah, this whole seating area looks really, really nice actually. Show times for this one on the hour from 12 p.m. up to an hour before park close, which is very similar to uh, the Angry Birds 4D cinema. And up goes Detonator. Hey. <laughs> and I'm really glad that they did keep that ride. There was talks that it might have been getting removed, so I'm glad it's still here. But yeah, this all looks great. All the fresh paintwork and Angry Birds Land, as I said in previous vlogs, it really was an area that had kind of outstayed its welcome. It opened here back in 2014, enjoyed almost 10 years here at the park, and uh, it was long overdue a replacement. So it's great to see this new area coming to the park. Yeah, love all this. It looks great. All the oranges, greens and purples here. And this will look absolutely fantastic during Mardi Gras. But Mardi Gras starts in a couple of days time. Yeah, we'll take a uh, showing of Ready Player One in the Sunset Cinema a little bit later on. I'm going to grab a ride on Detonator while I'm here. Absolutely fantastic. Dropped out of this one and just a 25 minute wait. just had my ride on detonator then advertised 15 waited just 15 and yeah it's the same ride that you've loved since 2001 nice and intense heights of 115 feet dropping your speeds of 50 miles an hour great airtime on that one and you know what i really do like the re-theme the whole firework factory the story surrounding the fireworks and the fourth of july even though i kind of feel that would suit more of a shot tower than a drop tower however it's still great the only thing i would say is that i kind of miss the ride operator having a little bit of fun with you before they drop you it's now a pre-recorded sequence which I feel kind of takes away a little bit of the fun of it however maybe that's something that will come back at some point in the future still an absolutely fantastic ride and this is all really cool as well to keep up with that theming in the exit queue they've got all of these uh, dummy firework cases here <laughs> it's a nice little touch big rocket here as well red white and boom yeah look at this fury 100 shot <laughs> yeah, nice bit of theming that. I like it. And yeah, like I say, I think they have done a great job with the re-theme of this one. Love the rockets here and the banners across there. Looks really, really nice. Fireworks founded in New Orleans. And up she goes. <laughs> Some more rockets here as well. Yeah, I think it looks really good. All nicely repainted up there. It's got some colored boxes out the front. Manufacturer of the red, white, and boom. Yeah, it looks really, really nice and much better than it did when it was uh, detonator bombs away as part of Angry Birds Land. And as you can see, we got the stage set up for Mardi Gras. Yeah, Mardi Gras prep ongoing all throughout the park, it seems, for just a few days' time, right next to a Big Easy Bumpers. And what's interesting is look what's running. Yeah, I saw a car testing earlier. Tidal Wave is actually open, which is great. Again, I'm not going to be riding it, but I will get some off-ride shots a little bit later. Just a 10-minute wait for Big Easy Bumpers. Yeah, this is the re-theme of King Pig's Wild Hogs. No Angry Birds and King Pig cars anymore. We've got green, blue and red. Hey. And right opposite that we've got Boulevard Bites. Now this is actually a replacement for Peckish. Unfortunately though, it doesn't actually appear to be open. I guess they're still doing a little bit of prep work before they open this for the new season. So yeah, that's currently closed. We've got the Big Easy refreshment just off to the left with all your vending machines here. And it is now approaching at one o'clock. So I'm gonna head on into the new Sunset Cinema now and get a showing of Ready Player One. I'll give you my thoughts when I come out, right next to the Sax in the City Music Store. I like this facade here. Got all the saxophones, cymbals, guitars, little accordion, bongo drums. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really nice. Yeah, let's head on in, Ready Player One. It's a 12A, this one. So you have to be accompanied by an adult if you are under 12. There we are, there he is out the front with your specs. Let's go take a look.
And I've just come out of the brand new Sunset Cinema then after having watched Ready Player One. Yeah, and whilst I was in there, a big old storm has barreled through. Everyone's got absolutely soaked and all the coasters are currently closed. Yeah, I could actually hear the rain from inside the building, so it was quite a heavy downpour. Luckily, I completely <laughs> avoided it. Chose the right time to go in there, I think. Uh, in terms of the show itself, though, Ready Player One is an absolutely fantastic film. Really, really good. If you've not seen it, definitely go and check it out. However, I'm not the biggest fan of 4D cinemas, and that one hasn't really done much to change my mind. You get the seats rocking, you get the lighting effects, uh, the air cannons, the smoke effects, things like that, but I kind of feel like they're more of an annoyance, really, than anything else. There's a bit of an overuse of air cannons you know, uh, on that one as well. So, yeah, it hasn't changed my mind in how I feel about 4D cinemas, but the Ready Player One footage is really good. It's all like the highway races and stuff, and like I say, check the film out if you've not already seen it. It's about a 15 minute show and yeah now I've done it I certainly won't be doing it again when I next visit the park however it's good to say that I have done it and seen the new rebranded cinema as well And a little bit of footage there of Double Tea Party, one of the oldest rides at Thor Park, the 1986 Mack Rides Teacup Ride. And as you can see, the skies are starting to turn blue again, the sun's starting to come back out, rides have been testing and Stealth has just reopened. There's still quite a bit of queue here, but it was actually holding people at the entrance here and this queue was coming all the way back here. They're just starting to let people in now. So hopefully the rides will be back up in operation really soon. Yeah, made my way over to Amity Speedway just to check out the changes around here and get my ride on stealth, of course. But yeah, it's great to see all this signage updated finally. Zero to 80 miles an hour in 1.8 seconds. They've made it slightly quicker, up from 1.9. And here she comes. Absolutely awesome Intamin launch coaster. Absolutely fantastic. Do love stealth. Yeah, it's nice. The tire's been all redone here. That all looks really good. And of course, you've got that test seat out here for stealth as well. Audio blaring in this area. Sounds great. Oh, I do love stealth. It does make me worry though for the future of stealth. Obviously hydraulic launches now are becoming a thing of the past and I do feel that at some point stealth is going to undergo a big refurbishment and they're going to they're going to remove this hydraulic launch which will slow things down a bit but does obviously uh, improve that reliability. I hope stealth has got a number of years left in it though because in terms of that kick that you get ah oh, you can't beat it it's absolutely fantastic like i say 0 to 80 1.8 seconds what a ride i love all this advertising here as well smoking tires for the best skid marks ever <laughs> we got depth charge here as well diving school amity cove and we got freedom fireworks down here as well for big easy boulevard can't quite see that one thanks to the uh, <laughs> thanks to the picnic table here. Light for auto, full diagnostics, Gator Gasoline, New Orleans, and Color Photos, new technology. Yeah, it all looks really nice and fresh around here for stealth actually. All the new paintwork looks really, really good. And what's also great as well is there's now Q-Line TVs which just tells you what to expect when you get to the backdrop area and how to board the ride itself as well and yeah this all looks really good slick motor oil it's slippery stuff ah nice to see the blue skies back again and feeling pretty warm again with the sun coming through it's a photo finish yeah this looks really good as well amity speedway the least drag on there tp06 2006 being the year that stealth opened here at thorpe park all right, it's time to join the queue for this Intamin launch coaster. Oh, and I 
just had an absolutely glorious ride on stealth there then it is just absolutely fantastic i always forget just how much of a kick that ride has not to 80 in 1.8 seconds and as i said before it does make me worry about the future of this ride of course hydraulic launches are becoming rarer and rarer worldwide from a reliability perspective they're just kind of coming to the end of their lives now and they're getting replaced by those lsm equivalents which just don't have that same kick i will always be a fan of the hydraulic launches and stealth is just one of the best out there it really is incredible one of the best rides here at the park and it's great to see those refresh theming changes as well it all looks really good but... <laughs> ah it's a belter of a ride the uh, the queue tvs are a nice touch as well seems to you know kind of be helping the throughput of the ride a little bit you know people are now kind of more aware of what they have to do on approach to the ride itself so yeah it's a nice touch stealth ah oh, what a ride hopefully it's here for many more years to come and making my way out of Amity Speedway now then, and here is Rumba Rapids, another ride that is out of action for opening day 2024. Again, a little bit of a shame to see, but it is a water ride. It's not a ride that I would have got on, even though you don't really get very wet on this one. Interestingly though, the audio and announcements are still playing, which is uh, a little bit strange. Yeah, along with Double Tea Party, one of the earliest remaining rides at the park, this opened back in 1987 from Intamin. And yeah, you got the 205 foot tall stealth top hat looming over the area as well. Oh, gives me shivers every time. And I've made my way around to Nemesis Inferno then. Current queue time, 50 minutes. The B&M Invert opened here in 2003. With those glorious interlocking corkscrews. is now the second Nemesis ride in operation here in the UK with Nemesis Reborn at Alton Towers now open. Let's join the queue. just had an absolutely fantastic ride on Inferno then waited just 45 minutes coming through the Nemesis Inferno shop now and most of this merch we have seen before but I just like to reiterate just how awesome the Nemesis Inferno merch is for this season love all these embroidered hoodies really really nice this one's really nice as well which we saw in the mega store but a shirt that wasn't in the mega store is this one I really do like this this looks similar to the Oblivion one at uh, Alton Towers but yeah look at that Nemesis nice and embroidered there and Inferno at the bottom with screenshots of the ride there and some stats nothing on the back but yeah really do like that that's a nice shirt I gotta say quite impressed with the new merch at Thorpe Park for this season yeah some really really nice bits and pieces to find here and obviously not forgetting the rides for the younger of those among us there he is Mr Monkey <laughs> his banana ride currently on a five minute wait yeah he's looking all nice and refreshed isn't he <laughs> here he is his banana boat through there up and in operation for the first day of the season yeah it's good to see and of course in this area of the park you also have ghost train which opened back in 2016 manufactured by both intamin and merlin magic making this one and this was rebranded rebranded last year after having been Darren brown's ghost train since it opened and yeah while it was improved with the removal of the vr and the new story i still don't feel it's quite worth a 60 minute wait to be honest it is worth doing once per season but i'll come back a little bit later on in the day to see if this queue has died down a little bit and as we are on approach then to the UK's newest, tallest and fastest roller coaster, look how well rethemed this area has become here. Burger King looking absolutely fantastic with the gold frontage, flame grilling since 1954. Yeah, all well, the toilets redone as well. Ladies, men's accessible toilets and all gender, all looks really, really nice. 
Yeah, all themed in with Hyperia with all, like I say, the gold frontage. Looks great. A little game store off to the right here, Victorious Games. Looks really, really nice. The big uh, cuddly toys in there. <laughs> oh, but look at Hyperia though. How absolutely awesome does that look, especially against that blue sky. It looks incredible. And all the fencing that's been removed here since I last visited actually inside the park. Got a little bit of a better view now. And then we've got the gates at the front here. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Let's see what other views we can get. And while we're in this part of the park then, it is worth noting that Black Mirror Labyrinth is now closed and has been completely removed for 2024. All the signage completely taken down here. The entrance and this area here all completely fenced off. Now what this will be in the future, not too sure. There are rumors circulating that this space could be used for a future scare maze, for uh, you know a Fright Nights event at some point in the future. However, I'm kind of thinking more positive and hoping that, uh, hey, Colossus is lift hill. I'm hoping this entire area will be completely flattened and rethemed for something brand new. Of course, this is where the old Sky Squad attraction, the Slammer, used to be, and you can still see the supports for it here. It's still actually in amongst all this undergrowth here, just rotting away. They couldn't actually remove this in the past due to environmental reasons. I believe a protected species of bird or something was nesting here, so they weren't actually allowed to touch it. However, I believe that as of now, that's not actually the case, and this could actually be removed very very soon so hopefully they just flatten this entire area and make something brand new here i think that would be really really good to see but we'll see what uh, the future holds for this particular space and here we are then for the first time looking at Hyperia from inside Thought Park. Obviously a couple of months ago when I last had this angle there was no verticality at all, it was just flat space. So to see it from here, oh, it really does look absolutely epic. And as we get past a couple of the construction walls here, we can see some landscaping that's gone on, some trees and planting going into place. All looks really nice, this will obviously all grow up over the uh, coming months and years. To look really good. We've got some rock work going in as well. Obviously it still looks really messy at the moment. It's still very much a work in progress obviously, but it's getting there. Yeah, the stylized look of the merchandise building and the little photo booth just off to the left as well. All coming along. We've got CCTV in place there as well. But look at this. What an absolute monstrosity. <laughs> It looks great. And if you can just work him out there, there is a guy who just stood on the catwalk steps here, possibly carrying out some kind of track inspection. Who knows? There are rumors that the trains are actually on site now. Can't see them, but of course the park will be keeping those very secretive for now. But I wouldn't be surprised if testing starts on this very, very soon. Of course, the layout was completed a couple of weeks ago with this topping off here of the crown of the lift hill featuring the Union flag, the German flag and the new Thorpe Park logo. A saw goes off in the background there as well. And then the chain lift hill was fitted just a couple of days after that. But it really does look absolutely grand. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, good to see all the landscaping and groundwork still going on here. We've got the digger still on site. And yeah, this will all be tidied up over the coming months. Still no opening date for this one, expecting it to be mid to the end of May, potentially. We'll have to keep, uh, keep our eyes open for that one. But hopefully testing will start very, very soon and we can actually start seeing the trains go around here. That first drop, absolutely mind boggling. It looks incredible. Cannot wait to ride this beast. And we've definitely had a weird day with the weather today. We've just had another front push through with high winds and hail. And I'll tell you, those rides on Saw must have been particularly uncomfortable. It was actually enough for Thorpe Park to activate their rainy day guarantee, which means everybody in the park today can actually return for free at a later date. It doesn't always help people out, depending on how far you've traveled, of course, but it is nice for the park to offer that. It's not the park's fault, obviously. The weather is what it is. But uh, yeah, it is nice if you can return on a much better day for free. Just to the right of Saw, though, we've got the Mondial Top Scan, which used to call Chessington World of Adventures its home. 
that is still undergoing its winter maintenance. However, more to the point, this is actually going to be getting uh, repainted back to its original colour scheme, which should look pretty good. I think that'll fit in quite nicely with the close by Hyperia theming. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing that. A shame that it is still down, but I'm expecting this to be back up again within the next couple of weeks. just got off my ride on saw the ride and you know what not a bad ride at all i wasn't on a rear a wheel seat but i was on the back row which is usually quite painful but i've got off there with no headache whatsoever yeah saw the ride open back in 2009 it's a gerslauer Eurofighter with a 100 foot drop at 100 degrees all the effects in there working so yeah that was really really good to see and yeah like i say getting off on a fairly comfortable ride on that yeah impressive good ride and I've made my way over to Colossus now then, which unfortunately is experiencing quite a bit of downtime. It's been down for the best part of 30 minutes and I haven't even seen it testing yet. So uh, yeah, not looking too good for Colossus at the moment, but I thought I'd come down to the Cobra Roll just to check out the refurb that's happened during the closed season as part of the Sparkled project. And yeah, these supports all nice and freshly painted up here in that yellow color. And the track as well, a nice blue track, all freshly painted. It looks really, really nice, actually. Now, not the entire ride is done. This is kind of being done in sections, with this section being completed over the close season, 23 into 24. And the rest of the ride will get done over the next season or two. But I've got to say, it's certainly a positive step in the right direction. It looks really, really good. Yeah, and all this area just down here has been pressure washed as well. That looks really, really nice. All the theming at the back here looks really good. Yeah, it's good to see because this ride at the end of last season was looking pretty grubby. So it's good to see it looking back to its, uh, its former glory. Yeah, all the theming down here looks really, really nice. Yeah, look at that. Really nice and clean now, all the theming down here, all nicely pressure washed. Yeah, it looks great. Good to see. Once again, just a shame about the downtime. And just made my way around to Colossus's entrance then, and yeah, unfortunately, it's not looking too good. Staff at the entrance saying they're not too sure when it's going to be coming back in operation. And like I say, it's been down for almost 40 minutes now, and uh, we are kind of approaching park close, so it may not open um, by the end of today, which is a shame. Always do enjoy a ride on Colossus. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, it's still a fantastic ride. Open back in 2002, uh, manufactured by Intamin. It's one of their multi-inversion models. Back before it was built, it was originally going to be a launched coaster before it was changed to a multi-inversion one at the last minute and it's a great ride it's the ride that kind of really put Thorpe Park on the thrill map if you like it was their first big thrill ride and it is absolutely fantastic it's uh, yeah celebrated its 20th anniversary not so long ago and uh, it's always good to get a ride on there but unfortunately today doesn't look like it's going to be that day and with Colossus still experiencing some considerable downtime then, I thought I'd head on over to Walking Dead The Ride. But first off, I just thought I'd put this in here. This is new for 2024, and if you enjoy your fish and chips, make sure you come and check this out. You can get a meal deal there, which is a choice of fish, scampi, sausage or pie, with curry, mushy peas, or gravy and any soft drink for $13.95. You also get your fish and chips, sausage and chips, scampi pie fish finger sandwich if that takes your fancy or you can just get chips on their own with a variety of sauces there yeah the pricing is pretty fair actually for something like this and i gotta say i love it look at this <laughs> love the theming on that that's great a big lighthouse on the side looks really good
And just had my ride on Walking Dead the ride then, and it was great to see the scare actors back in there again at the start of the season. Hopefully that continues throughout 2024, as it didn't really happen very much last season. And I tell you what, they do a great job of scaring you in there. Yeah, it was a good ride as well, nice and smooth, all the effects working in there, and I waited about 30 minutes for my ride. Making my way down to Swarm Island now then, but of course that means walking past Flying Fish, the park's very first roller coaster, opened all the way back in 1983 currently with a walk-on queue as well so let's jump on this one I've just had my ride on the Flying Fish then, which is a great little powered coaster here at the park. And yeah, opened all the way back in 1983. It was the park's first roller coaster. And there's a three lap special going on there today. And uh, yeah, it's a great one. What a visit be to Thorpe Park without going on the Flying Fish. I mean, come on, it's a great little coaster. Anyway, I'm making my way down to Swarm Island now. Now the interesting thing about this is Swarm is actually closed. As a matter of fact, this entire area is closed off. There's members of staff stopping people actually coming into here. Uh, due to the high winds we've had today, Swarm has closed, likely not going to be open for the rest of the day. However, he's let me through just so I can film um, some of the refurbs that's obviously gone on during the closed season as part of the Sparkle project. So let's take a look around and see what we can see. And seeing as the area is completely closed to people at the moment, I thought I'd pop in and actually film uh, what they've done in the toilets here. And yeah, look at this. This is all looking really nice. Yeah, all the uh, motion activated lighting on here and yeah, these sinks. Now these are a lot better, aren't they, than the uh, foot pedal switch that you used to get in here. Yeah, it's all really, really nice. Obviously this is the male toilet. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the channel is now uh, Adventure Toilet. There you go. But uh, yeah, love all this blue lighting here. Yeah, this looks really nice. Yeah, he's done a great job in here. Yeah, really, really cool. I'm assuming the female side will look very much the same. Yeah, great job. Really, really nice. And after a quick look at the toilets there then over at Swarm Island, which arguably is kind of the biggest refurb that's actually happened here, thought I'd head on down towards the entrance of the Swarm. They have just sent a car around to test, so maybe it is going to be opening up before the uh, park actually closes. They've only got 40 minutes to get the ride back open. The wind has died down somewhat, so there's not really uh, any reason that I can see that they wouldn't open the ride for the last 30 to 40 minutes of the day. There's still no one else here though, so I'm assuming they've still, uh, they're still keeping the entrance to the island closed. However, I think they will open it up very, very shortly. And if it does open up, I'll be first in the queue. <laughs> Good to see all the audio still blaring out around here. Ah, oh, the swarm looks absolutely fantastic. Still one of my favourite coasters here in the UK, along with Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, we've got some permanent lighting installed around here as well, which is great to see. And also some generator lighting as well, unfortunately, which is still here. <laughs> it is what it is. Hopefully that'll get removed. Yeah, we've got some more permanent lighting here as well. You certainly get more of that in and then they can start removing things like this, which really doesn't look the best. Yeah, as you can see, still closed due to that wind today. Yeah, we've been a little bit unfortunate with the weather. Like I say, rain is one thing, but wind for roller coasters, yeah, that's really not good. And you know, the thing is, is there's nothing that you can do about it. You know, the ride simply will not run if the wind speed is too high. So I'll hang around here for a little bit, see if this does reopen for today, see if I can get a ride in on the Swarm. Be great if I could. Obviously a test seat out here as well for those that want to try it out. And here she comes. B&M Wing Coaster. Not the only one in the UK anymore. Not with Mandrill Mayhem at Chessington's World of Adventures. Fantastically themed ride this though, opened back in 2012. As she goes through that inline twist. Let's see if I can get on. 
and I've just made my way into the station of the Swarm Men, appreciating the awesome theming as uh, I was told that it had reopened. However, the alarm has just gone off yet again for high winds, so they've had to close it again. <laughs> it's been, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting day today. Lots of ups and downs. And I don't think I'm uh, going to get my ride in on Swarm today, unfortunately. However, it does allow me to appreciate the absolutely awesome theming in here. It really is great. The Ops cabin looks fantastic. Absolutely love this coaster. Yeah, I'll wait around at the air gates for a little while. But uh, yeah, the wind has been really unpredictable today. It's not the park's fault, like I say. It's just one of those things. Safety is paramount. I'll hang around for a little while, see if I can get my ride in on this one. If not, I'll be closing the vlog. And I've had not just one, but two rides on the Swarm then. Yeah, it finally opened up just a couple of minutes till six o'clock. Yeah, he sent me around, got back into the station, still no one there, sent me around again, had the entire train all to myself, which was fantastic. And you know what, the Swarm, yes, I might still have hearts in my eyes, but I absolutely love that ride. It's a fantastic B&M wing, really, really well themed. And I find it a comfortable experience. There's a lot of people that kind of think that the restraints clamp down a little bit it too much at the end of that ride I don't really find that with myself I actually find it really really comfortable and you know what if I could ride that all day I really really would and that brings us to the end of the vlog today then and, and you know what it's been a good day but a little bit of a weird day yes there's been a lot of interruptions due to the inclement weather today both high winds and heavy rain which has meant that a lot of the rides has seen significant downtime today um, which has been a little bit of a shame no fault of Thorpe Park obviously and they have activated their rainy day guarantee which means if you were here today you can return at any point throughout the 2024 season completely for free which is great really really good for people that uh, felt a little bit put out today I feel a little bit worried this morning in terms of ride av availability though a lot of rides seem to take uh, a lot of a long time to actually come up into operation certainly around the Lost City area Colossus was late starting Tidal Wave was late starting as well so uh, I do feel like that could be improved um, for the future um, great to see the sparkle project updates yes arguably this is stuff that should be done anyway on a yearly basis but i think it's a positive step and things are looking really really fresh colossus looks fantastic and at least half of it anyway you know nice and freshly painted um, the areas around uh, hyperia really really good to see the re-theming of the burger king and the toilets all looks really really nice the swarm as well or the island swarm island at least the new toilets in there look great as you saw in the earlier clip so yeah it's all really positive changes and of course big easy boulevard great to see angry birds land finally gone after nearly 10 years replaced with something original and i think it looks great um the new the new cinema looks for, um looks perfect um the detonator looks great rethemed into that fireworks factory i think that looks fantastic there's some great audio that plays around there as well and i think it'll be a fantastic base for mardi gras this year as well which starts in just a couple of days through until the 14th of April. It's been a fantastic day. I'm so glad that the season is back in full swing here at Thorpe Park because I really do love this park so much. It's great to come down to visit. And uh, in terms of locality, it's one of my closest parks um, aside from Legoland Windsor. So I'm looking forward to uh, more visits in the future, especially when Hyperia opens. I've heard through the grapevine that the trains are basically their arrival is imminent um, it's going to be literally in the next few days which means testing is going to start very very soon still not sure when it's going to open looking like mid-may i can't see it being on a weekend it would be absolute carnage i'm assuming they're going to do some kind of a soft opening perhaps maybe at the end of a weekday or maybe it'll open in midweek much like um, chessington's world of jumanji last year um, because they're really going to need to do something to quell those queues because otherwise it is going to be absolute carnage however we'll be here day one getting our first rise on hyperia and i cannot wait for it in terms of the next vlog though speaking of legoland windsor that's where we'll be next on opening day of their new coaster or coasters minifigure speedway team legends team all-stars is a double credit to get there at legoland windsor 
cannot wait to ride that new Zero Coaster. It looks fantastic where it is, and I'm really looking forward to getting on that and experiencing it. That's coming up right here on Adventure Planet this time next week. However, from Thorpe Park, I want to thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy riding, everybody, and I will see you at Legoland Windsor.